Welcome to Her Incredible Mind, where we are highlighting some of the most successful women in science, technology, engineering, and math. These women are inspirational leaders, showing resilience in the face of adversity. By sharing these success stories, we hope to gain insight, inspire, and help guide those who are struggling on their journey within this industry. Hopefully their stories will inspire you or someone you know to pursue a career in STEAM. Natalie, let's chat about your role today. Can you describe your role today to me? Sure. Um, my title is a principal information engineer at Glance Networks. Um, I wear a lot of different hats. My primary function is I am a documentation special specialist, so I write all of our product documentation. I maintain all of our internal backend documentation as well as our user interface text. So pretty much every kinds of content that lives uh, on our website and uh, internally. I also am a product manager. I manage our integrations at Glance. So a lot of um, learning about other systems and how they interface with ours and creating um, tools and integrations to extend our functionality. And um, yeah, I also do a lot of user research and testing on, on our interfaces as well. Great. Now, Glance Net Networks is a pretty interesting uh, company, right? When you think about this whole experience now with COVID and what's going on here, you're one of the you know, leading companies that actually has been doing a lot in this video area and in, in really user ability, uh, you know, kind of uh, parts of the applications and everything else and, and all of that, um, you know, kind of integration work. Do you feel as if this has been a big, uh, you know, um, change for you guys? Or is it just a larger amount of, of uh, stuff that you're working on? You know, it's kind of interesting. It has definitely um, been a curious time. And I feel like it's more like now we get to share with the world what we do so well, right? You know, right. before it didn't seem, it seemed like a nice to have, oh, maybe we'll have some visual engagement. And now it's like, that's our primary way to interface right. with our public and with their customers. So it's really, um, it hasn't, it's more like we're allowing other people are getting to see the value of what we do every day. So that's what's really exciting about this time. Yeah, very exciting with Glance too. You guys have a lot of really uh, great clients. So it's nice to see that for a, a smaller organization to have that kind of uh, following is great. It usually means your product is exceptional, which is why they stay with you, you know? So right. that's, that's good to know. So how, how did you decide on this role? Like, did you fall into this role or did you, is this what you wanted to do? Um, I've always had a love of writing since I was a little kid, um, and I've always loved creative aspects of, um, you know, arts and language and all that. And um, just, I think as I got to college, I initially started off in a journalism major, and I did a few internships doing that. And I realized, one, I don't know where print media is going as an industry. It was like, you know, 2007, that kind of um, financial crisis was challenging. And then also I was like, hey, I can still apply these um, techniques to other types of roles. You know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to work at an art gallery to deal with art. You know, uh, a user interface is an art form in a way and a lot of design skills are applicable in different ways. Yeah, uh, you very nicely uh, led me through the process of STEAM and in that, you know, uh, what I had kind of had as a misconception about this, the arts in, in technology was fantastic when we talked about the UIs and kind of the user interface, but also the user experience has to be creative and that has to have a lot of, you know, artistic uh, components to that as well. I'm, I you, I talk about you a lot in some of the uh, the other interviews that I do in some of the, the uh, clients that I speak to because you brought up a wonderful point that I, I thought of it in just this, you know, really boxed in kind of mentality, but truly it's so much broader than that. Once you add the, the, the arts into it, it, you know, you think of it in the traditional way, you know, something hanging on a wall or, you know, uh, you know, music or something like that, but there truly is a huge amount of visual and artistic, you know, um, components to, to what you're doing. Right. And also a humanitarian aspect too. If you, you know, work in social sciences as well, it's a lot about how people interact with a tool. And then also things like accessibility is huge at glance. And we spent a lot of time creating an interface that works for all types of people. And so you're really considering them when you're building something like that. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, like helping a general population make a tool that's usable, that's like a great feel to get into. That would be great. I'm sure a lot of young girls would actually be excited by 
actually mixing together their arts, you know, creativity as well as their curiosity for technology too, as well at the same time. So what matters to you most though about your role? Uh, what I like most about my role is that I get to create the world that I want to live in, right? Um, so we work with large financial institutions to help build out customer experiences. And I'm someone who is like using banking every day, you know, so I get to decide a little bit what that experience is like and try to build a world that I want to live in um, and help, you know, all kinds of people, whether it's my grandparents or uh, young people or whoever it is to use a tool um, and learning more about how they they use that is, is incredibly exciting for me. It's a great answer. It was a very good answer. So uh, what do you think when you think about your role and you think about where you are in the company, do you feel uh, you know, that you're, you're where you want to be today? What would your next you know, kind of you know, uh, role that you would like to see be? Um, I'd love to branch out more. I've branched out more in the product side, the product development side, working with customers to create requirements and things like that of the kinds of products they want to build. And that's very exciting because traditionally I've been more on the development end tail of, you know, someone's already told us what to do and now we're just kind of going with it and making that happen. So to get kind of a holistic view of the software development life cycle. Um, and then also to learn more about the pre-process, the sales process as well. So that's what's very interesting about my role is that I'm very head to tail, beginning and end of the, the software development like life cycle. So what do you, if you decided to change your career in, in your path at all, or has it been, this, is, this has been what you've set out to do and that was it? I mean, I started off traditionally in large scale enterprise kind of software world where I was working on a large scale de documentation team that was part of development. And then as I've moved, I've kind of just naturally progressed my career. I moved more into a design organization where I learned a lot more about user interface design and research. And then now I've moved into more of a product role. So it's just kind of been a natural progression over time, moving a little bit back further into the process as I go along, you know from development to ideation to like requirements building, so. What do you think about the obstacles that you've had in your career? What obstacles do you think you've overcome in your career? Hmm, I think one, you know, whether it's being as a, as a woman or as someone who is not, you know, traditionally an engineer, you always feel like you don't know anything and you always feel like, oh, I'm stupid or like, I don't have, um, I don't wanna sound stupid in front of these people, things like that. And I think over time, as I've learned is like, the questions that you ask, other people are secretly wanting to ask too. So I've completely, you know, jettisoned the idea of being the person who's like too afraid to ask questions because most of the time someone's like, oh, thank God someone else asked that. So. I think that that was a fabulous answer. I will tell you that right now, because I think that that's something that, you know, you're giving permission to others, right? To, mm. to ask the question, but you're doing it on your own. Good for you. That was, that's, that's taking the chance. And that's really right. to do And that. something I've stopped saying is like, is this a stupid question or like preemptive, the, you know, preempting the question with something else? It's like, you can just, no question is stupid. And people tend to say that, but it is true. Um, it is. So your role in, in your industry and in technology is actually very, you know, interesting, but it also has a lot of, uh, you know, moving parts to it. I mean, you're talking about user interaction, you're talking about technology, uh, adoption, change management, all of these things that really you're focusing on every single day. Do you feel like your industry, though, is different from, you know, we are experienced in that industry would be different from something in another industry? I can't say as I've mostly worked in technology my whole career. So uh, who am I to say what uh, a different work experience would be like? Um, yeah. <laughs> That's great though. It's, it's great because, you know, the fact that you've stayed in technology for as long as you have means that, you know, you really have enjoyed it. And that's been a career path for you to continue to grow in, you know, and add those things that we talked about on there, you know, exchange management, learning about the customer experience and driving it from you. I love your perspective where you talk about, you talk about what the things that you would like to see, right? You mm -hmm. know, products and that that's really, you know, exceptional because most people, they're just continuing to whiteboard instead of actually really thinking through the process of what they would, be, you know, would want to see out of a product. That's neat. 
And um, a former CEO said something to me where every company is a technology company. <laughs> you know, we don't live in a world, every company has a website, every company has, you know, a platform, a log it, everything. So if, if you're interested in a particular domain, there are technology companies that do that. You know, if you're into farming, there are technology companies that make that happen, yeah. you know, so. That's an excellent point. Absolutely. Uh, so what would you say to your younger self? Hmm. I think I would say to my younger self, uh, not to be afraid, uh, to go in the scientific direction as well. Um, because like it, you tend to feel afraid sometimes as a woman to pursue that Avenue or it feels overwhelming and just to push a little bit more because, um, you can learn a lot. And what advice would you give to young girls today? That everything is a possibility for you. That's great. That's so positive. I love that. <laughs> so here's the question. This is our final question. And we ask okay. everyone. So it is, uh, if your LinkedIn profile was limited to three words, what would you choose? I think my three words <laughs> would be energy, empathy, and action. That's, that's awesome. I think that's great. That's great. <laughs> You're a doer, you have the energy to do, and you have the empathy to know what needs to be done is not always achievable for everyone. So that's great. That's really yeah. Good. Natalie, thank you so much for being with us on Her Incredible Minds. We do appreciate it. Uh, we think that you've done a wonderful job in your career at Glance, and uh, it's, a, it's a, a tribute to your passion and your energy. So thanks thank so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.